Lee comes ahead to Grant to the rim for the jam. Oh. He dunked. He dunked all the morning. Nasty. Wow. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Bogus Hall. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends giving their opinion about how good Grant Hill really was. So I'm taking you back to the 1990s and the early 2000s. But before we dive into that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and click the notifications button so you never miss an episode of the Basketball Time Machine. All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. So the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Paul Pierce, who obviously played the same position and had many battles with Grant Hill. So let's have a look. I do want to start with Grant Hill. Tell us what it was like going against him for the kids who only know him as the injured guy or the really nice guy on the broadcast. Well, for one, I, I patterned my game after Grant Hill. You know, I used to watch him when he was at Duke uh, every night whenever he played. And, you know, he was one of the first guys that was like a forward that handled the ball, uh, can bring it up, pass, do everything like a guard. And I remember as a rookie matching up against him, I was, it, he, he left me absolutely helpless. <laughs> This is the one time Come I felt on. helpless on the court. It was like the last three minutes of the game, and he either scored on me, I fouled him, <laughs> or he dished it to somebody for a score. And I remember saying to myself, like, this guy is pretty much unstoppable. And, uh, you know, hats off. He deserved everything he gets because he was on his way, you know, to being the best player in the league uh, in his prime. You know, he was right there with Michael Jordan. The Detroit Pistons select Grant Hill from Duke University. Well, it's hard for Grant Hill to go unnoticed. I just hope they let him be Grant Hill and not try to compare him to somebody else. Well, the Grant Hill era was a strong period of Piston basketball, actually. When Grant Hill came in here, he wasn't perceived as a bad boy, that's for sure. He had a very, you know, clean-cut, wholesome image, which that's who he was. Kid, you got the moves, you got the talent, you got a problem. You're too nice. We'll fix that. Okay, Mr. Lambert. The Grand Hill era was special, you know, for a number of reasons. People always said that the Pistons have never had this effervescent, popular superstar who was on commercials and was nationally recognized. And Grant Hill's a nationally known commodity, and he belonged to Detroit. Now making way up for Grant Hill. Here comes the reverse jam. That's what the fans been waiting on, George. You know, it's kind of unfortunate that the relationship between Jalen Rose and Grant Hill was so sour for so many years. Jalen Rose playing for Michigan back in college and Grant Hill playing for Duke. Naturally, they were enemies at that time. But yeah, it could have been better, that relationship. But now, Jalen Rose is admitting why he was sour and bitter about Grant Hill. Let's take a look. He probably didn't care or think about it like that, but I did because ultimately it seemed like he had everything that I wanted. He came from a tremendous family. His mom was roommates with Hillary in college. He had a famous athletic dad that he knew and he loved and it was in his life. I had a famous athletic dad that I didn't know that wasn't in my life. Yeah, Jimmy Walker. He went to the University of Duke. Duke, where, Univers yeah, Duke yeah. University, where, especially during the early 90s, it became a good versus evil playing against the evil University of Michigan thugs versus the polished Dukies. So it was always there as, as an undercurrent. So the best quote that I heard was kind of like Alexander, uh, Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. He's a movie star. But I'm a rock star. I, th I think for Grant, we all played the what if game for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, well said. How many times did you say why? Because I, I think. Well, I did say that. How many times you said why me, that. knowing that all I you've said, been through? But you know, I probably thought more about my Detroit years and maybe what if. Just, just being, first of all, a lot of you guys 
our contemporaries. So I played against you guys, mm -hmm. so it brings back memories. But, you know, I, I, it really was another lifetime. I, I, I've yeah, kind of put that way back in the but memory. But that that's what makes you Grant Hill. You're humble. But I think the what-if game from us competing against you, watching you play, I have never seen anything like that. You didn't have a lot with you. And you that's made a little disrespectful, easy. but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, I, 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 will, I will say this, though. You know, it's funny. With, with YouTube now and things like that, my, my children, my daughter, who's 11, she'll get on there every once in a while. She'll be like, Dad, you were pretty good. <laughs> like, you weren't always a scrub. college, <laughs> <laughs> watching him play, watch how he handled himself. Here is the Detroit Pistons, Grant Hill. The way he was exciting people, he had the total package. And he showed it right from the start. Oh, baby, what a play by Grant Hill! Grant, you sure were good tonight. He was perfectly fundamentally sound. Perfect dribble, perfect pass, the way he plays, and I became a fan instantly. He'd become the only rookie in NBA history to lead the all-star fan balloting. His stellar play and consistency provided quite a challenge for opponents. We pushed one another to be better basketball players. When he put up a triple-double, the next game I had to find a way to get a triple-double because he was the standard. Hill's smashing debut culminated with sharing Rookie of the Year honors with Jason Kidd. He continued to elevate his play, leading the NBA in triple-doubles in each of the next two seasons while becoming a perennial All-Star. There's no denying that. He was one of the best to lace him up. Red Hill has done it all tonight. He just had that it factor. What he's accomplished as a basketball player on and off the floor, I couldn't pick a better person to be in the same class with. I remember with Grant, it was anything he worked at, um, it was fluid. Probably the best off the dribble guy you're ever going to see in the NBA. Grant Hill gets it on the wing. He lets it go at the horn. Oh, man! I think during two or three of his years here, he was as good a player as there was in the entire NBA. There's nothing he couldn't do on the basketball court. But out of nowhere comes Grant Hill with the left hand, throws it out of here. Grant Hill's crossovers weren't this flashy, I'm carrying, I'm palming the ball and putting it up high and you're gonna reach for it. His crossovers were very low to the ground and he was playing against guys of like size. And that's when people began to see, okay, Maybe this Grant Hill guy's got a little bit of a real game that he's, you know, taking it to virtually everybody. It doesn't matter what type of, uh, what type of pedigree that you have. But then, the killer crossover. Yeah. And the slam for Grant. Ready. Grant Hill uh, had his moments when he proved how tough he actually was. That wasn't necessarily how he wanted to play the game, but when necessary, he would go right at you. Grant Hill was such a singular, special superstar. You know, maybe he didn't fit the bad boy mold, but talent-wise, no one would have turned him down and said that he couldn't fit in. People forget this guy was averaging almost triple-double numbers every season he was with the Pistons. Or he's right up there in most categories just because of the high level that he played at the time he was with the team. Grant Hill signified an era that shouldn't be forgotten about. Grant drives and a thunder dunk! Six years, but I think I didn't win. And I didn't have, you know, we're judged, as Reggie said earlier, on postseason. I didn't have yep. great success in the 90s in the postseason. So, you know, if that's part of the criteria, then, yeah, Scotty gets it. But head up, you know. Head up. I bet my numbers were, you know, yes. My numbers were, you know, You talk about the numbers being very similar, and they were, except that, that you had, uh, you averaged more points, rebounds, and assists than he did. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no burn, but, burn, 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 wait, wait, let, let, let's, let, let's acknowledge, I got more touches. Let's, let's, let's acknowledge on the real who, who this guy really mm -hmm. is sitting here, because when Jordan was retiring and Grant Hill was coming into the league, we were talking about passing the mantle to Grant. Yes, you, you was going, mm -hmm. so it ain't like you, you won, Scott, Scottie Pippen couldn't carry the league, Jordan carried the league. We're talking about a guy like yourself carrying the league. So you can't sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, Scott, you know, you know, <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll let you probably, say it. You were the worst no, player. No, 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 no,
You uh, are. You know what? Damn it. It's me. You know, I did a couple of episodes talking about the biggest what ifs in NBA history. And to me, as an old school NBA fan, it is such a sad thing to see that some players that really had the potential to be super special, that it didn't work out because of injuries or other reasons. And with Grant Hill, obviously, we know how special he would have been. But yeah, we never got to see his full potential, unfortunately. But hey, he was one of my favorite players back in the 1990s when he was still playing for the Detroit Pistons. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.